Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is... It is, uh, it is Monday, unless you're Chris Rock, because I'm pretty sure he got slapped into next week. <laughs> now, <laughs> thank you. That's really early. That's really early in the monologue for a rim shot. Thank you. Now, uh, for those of you who missed it, last night, uh, Chris was presenting the Oscar for Best Documentary. And he made an unflattering joke about Jada Pinkett Smith that her husband, Will Smith, apparently did not like. What makes me think that? <laughs> this. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the <laughs> out of me. Wow, indeed. That is the worst thing Will Smith has ever done. Wait, I forgot about Wild Wild West. <laughs> He's not, he's not. <laughs> he's not here, is he? He's not ran right there. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. The worst thing he's ever done is Gemini Man. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should slap both of the guys in that movie. <laughs> this is gonna go down in Oscar Hiskey history as one of the most chaotic moments of all time. It's up there with the, the streaker behind David Niven in 1974. Brando sending up Sasheen Littlefeather in 1973, or, or 1959 when Tony Curtis sack tapped Bob Hope. <laughs> let me, let me, let me say something here as an objective observer. It's never okay to punch a comedian. <laughs> now, <laughs> where do I find the courage? Where do I find the courage? I've got to say. Will Smith was offended by the joke and wanted to stand up for his wife. Fine. Challenge Chris to a duel. Or if you really want to hurt a comedian, don't laugh. <laughs> that hurts way more than a punch, I promise you. But it does... See, that's... That's... I'm gonna tell you, but this does prove one thing. Chris Rock can take a punch. I mean, we're the same age. He's 57 years old and a comedian. Look at this. Pap, Chris just shakes it off with one step. <laughs> Will Smith trained for months to play Muhammad Ali. <laughs> I have met Will Smith. Okay, I have spoken to the man right over there. He's got a hand like a flank steak. <laughs> if Will wanted to hit somebody, he should have picked on somebody more appropriate, like Jason Momoa or, or Liza Minnelli. <laughs> At this point, at this point, she's clearly unkillable. She is, she's gonna live forever. Today, we learned, and I can't believe this, this shows what a big guy is. Chris is not pressing any charges, okay? But of course, this is Hollywood and there are rules. You can't just storm a stage, physically assault someone on camera and then go back to your seat. There have to be consequences, like winning the Oscar for Best Actor <laughs> and receiving a standing ovation, then partying all night. Who says Hollywood sends a bad message to our kids? You see that, Johnny? You see that? You solve your problems with violence and everyone will love you and give you golden statues. Now off to the after party, mister. You've got a lot of your own music to dance to. No, you get jiggy with it, mister. <laughs> go get jiggy. Go, go. $100,000 cars, everybody got them. Water so clear to see straight to the bottom. You are going to Miami. But however you feel about celebrity on celebrity violence, and apparently you love it, because <laughs> the Oscars rating showed a 56% improvement. <laughs> so get ready for next year's 95th Academy Award Oscar Slaptacular Deathmatch. <laughs> Five nominees enter, one exits. Ridiculous. 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 Across the globe in Ukraine, Putin's criminal war continues to grind ahead, but for Russia, this has not been a cakewalk, or as they call it, a turnip jog. <laughs> Over the past few weeks, Russian forces have suffered heavy losses and have been thwarted in their primary objectives to control the country's main cities, including Kyiv. So the Russian military has now announced a change of strategy. Over the weekend, Russians said, the first phase of the war is over. Yes, <laughs> over. Everything's going according to plan. That plan? Phase one, we lose. <laughs> Phase two, war is over, we win. That's...
<laughs> don't have the knees. The knees. I don't for have me, the knees for it. I don't have the knees for it. Instead of toppling <laughs> Kyiv, experts believe that Russia's new objective is to split the country between regions it controls and regions it does not. You know you're starting to scare the school bully when he goes from, give me your lunch money, to, I'll tell you what, you keep your lunch money, I'll keep my lunch money, and I'll limit my wedgies to your butt's eastern regions. <laughs> this weekend, President Biden uh, traveled over to Europe uh, to shore up you know, the NATO alliance, show support for Ukraine, and rally all the world's allies. The president gave a stirring speech in Warsaw, and then he ended it with a little, you know, ad lib, a little, little free ball, a little make em up. <laughs> that was 100% pure scrappy Scranton. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia, for free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Come on, Jack. I know I'm not supposed to say it. Come on. Come on, let's just do it. Let's just. I'm just. I'm not supposed to say it. Putin's got to hop the next choo choo to bye bye junction, okay? <laughs> I'm shooting straight from the hip replacement here. I'm not afraid <laughs> to say the stuff ever we're all thinking, okay? Chris Rock was out of line. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you made a crack about Dr. Jill, I've jumped up on that stage and given his finger a good chomp down to knuckle number two. <laughs> then I'd win the Oscar for most teeth. Come on, Wanda. <laughs> now, officially, American policy is not to call for regime change. So this was a bit of a gaffe. But when you've already called someone a butcher and a war criminal, it would seem weird if you also thought they should keep their job. <laughs> There's a reason Winston Churchill never said this. We shall fight them on the beaches. We shall fight them on the landing grounds. But let's pump the brakes on replacing Hitler as chancellor. Everyone deserves a mulligan. <laughs> on Sunday... Sunday? On Sunday. On Sunday, Secretary of State Antony Blinken tried to walk back the president's remarks. As you know, and as you've heard us say repeatedly, we do not have a strategy of regime change in Russia or anywhere else for that matter. We do not have a strategy of regime change in Russia or anywhere else. That's an interesting point. Here with a rebuttal is Saddam Hussein's head in a box. <laughs> president Hussein. <laughs> president Hussein, is there anything you'd like to say? <laughs> there are some exceptions. <laughs> Whether or not we're officially trying to replace Putin, America and its allies continue to sanction his nipples right down to the nub. <laughs> and he's pushing back. Over the weekend, he gave a speech in which he took up the conservative talking point that opposing his war is cancel culture. <laughs> they will cancel Mother Russia just like they did Mr. Potato Head's beautiful penis. His penis is potato. <laughs> Putin also... Yeah. Get that out of there. <laughs> Disturbing to look at that box for too long. Putin <laughs> also compared himself to Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling, who's come under fire for repeatedly tweeting anti-trans sentiments. Vlad said, Not long ago, they canceled children's author J.K. Rowling, whose books were spread all over the world in hundreds of millions of copies because she did not please fans of so-called gender freedoms. Today, they are trying to abolish an entire thousand-year-old country, our people. No surprise, Putin likes Rowling. He's indebted her ever since she gave him that sock to set him free. <laughs> that was a long walk. That was a long walk, right? That's good. But worth it. That's good. Long... That's good. Long walk. Worth the wait. Oh, <laughs> uh, back closer to home, there's more dumb stuff coming out of the mouth of North Carolina Republican and frat bro telling the pledges where to shove that wriggling goldfish. <laughs> Madison Cawthorn. Cawthorn recently appeared on something called the Warrior Poets Society. <laughs> Sounds like a ridiculous name, but I have a lot of respect for warrior poets. Do you have any idea how long it takes to write a sonnet with an AR-15? <laughs> <laughs> Shall go 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 go. I go 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 go. Compare the go 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 go. On the society, on the society, Cawthorn explained why why you should never meet your heroes. The sexual perversion that goes on in Washington. I mean, being kind of a young guy in Washington, with the average age of probably sixty or seventy. 
and I look at all these people, a lot of them that I, I, you know, I've looked up to through my life, I've always paid attention to politics, guys that, you know, it, then all of a sudden you get invited to, like, well, hey, we're gonna have kind of a, a, a sexual get together at one of our homes, you should come. And I'm like, what, what, what did you just ask me to come to? Yeah. Uh, and then you realize they're asking you to come to an orgy. Yeah. <laughs> Took him a moment to realize it was an orgy because sexual get together is so subtle. <laughs> come naked and ready for sex with your penis. <laughs> now, Cawthorn does not name names here, but he's such a staunch MAGA Republican, I doubt he's getting invited to Democratic orgies. And the strangely <laughs> folksy nature of sexual get-together means he must be talking about the famed Republican flesh pit, Chuck Grassley's Ass Jamboree. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> to the sexual get-together. There'll be some screwing and chewing, some poking and stroking, some yanking and spanking. We're gonna be of various jellies on various bellies, and there's a platter of fish sticks, obviously, so grab a name tag and some nipple clamps and get right in. I'm Chuck Grassley, and I approve this massage. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Chris Wallace and NCIS's Wilmer Valderrama. But when we come back, somebody's in trouble with the January 6th committee. Can you guess who?